Hey guys, I'm Papa Pete, back with another video that's a little bit different than what I normally do. No pickups or anything this time, it's a follow-up video to, and you might be able to tell, see my shirt, Tradition. We have Brett Owen and Stu Hart, three of my favorite wrestlers, Calgary, Alberta, Canada, it doesn't get any better than that. Well, a few weeks ago, I did the unboxing of the big sump pump box that I put all kinds of stuff in, didn't even remember what was in it, and I found a couple sets of wrestling cards. Well, I did a video where I showed you all the 1985 Topps WWF cards. You can see a link to that. I'll put it up in here somewhere. If you haven't seen that yet, go ahead and take a look. But now I said that if enough people like that video, I do the complete set of 1987 cards that I found. So, without further ado, let's take a look at my complete set of 1987 Topps WWF wrestling cards. All right, guys. Here it is. Take a look. Got Hulk Hogan on the cover, as pretty much he was everything for WWF back in those days. Nine picture cards, one sticker, one stick bubblegum. Mm, the bubblegum will be certainly good by now. I don't have the stickers. I, I don't think the stickers are in here. If I look, I just don't see them. That looks a little different on top, but I don't think it's the stickers. I wish it was, but uh, anyway. Let's open it up and check it out. All right, we got him out of the bag now. We'll set him down right here. Perfect. All right, I like it when they have that, just that wax pack on top. Who's gonna be number one? Whoa, look who's on top. My all time favorite wrestler right there, Brett the Hitman Hart. Back in these days, he was still just doing the Hart Foundation thing. He hadn't become such a huge star as he became later on. But one thing about it is he was extremely respected. Come from a great lineage, like you saw on my shirt, right? The Hart family from Calgary, Alberta. Man, doesn't get any better than that. He is, he is my favorite wrestler of all time. Andre the Giant, of course. What more could be said? Andre Rene Rusimov. Well, he's long gone now, but uh, man, he was just something else. He never lost a match until WrestleMania three. I don't think there's any spoilers here. I mean, it is a 30, 35 year old friggin' uh, wrestling event. I don't, I'm not worried about spoiling something, but Andre, just amazing. I remember stories about him. He used to wrestle around this area. Of course, back in the old uh, days where there were all the different areas uh, for wrestling before WWF took it over naturally, uh, nationally. But uh, anyway, Andre, man, he's, there's so many stories to be told around him. And of course, Hulk Hogan. I'm surprised it's not the number one card, to tell you the truth. I don't know why it wouldn't be, but uh, they put on such an amazing match. I, there's just no way to explain to a wrestling fan nowadays the mainstream attention that these two made for uh for vince mcmahon back in that day it really is what took wrestling and brought it over the top wrestlemania the original one in 1985 did a lot but this one 1987 andre versus hulk was absolutely amazing in the news and it was just everywhere mainstream and it was even after this match was over it was on all the regular sports channels all the main national news Everything. It's just something else to see the WWF in, in that light. Now, I don't think we've ever seen it again since. I don't think we'll ever see it again, frankly. And Frankie used to be with Coco Beware. Of course, there's Coco Beware with him. I don't know why Frankie would have his own card, but whatever. And then Coco. I think I'm going to move that out underneath there because it doesn't want to lay down very uh, smoothly. Tito Santana. I always liked Tito, as uh, Jesse would call him, Chico. I think Jesse might have been gone by this time. Anyway, oh yes, Randy Macho Man Savage and Elizabeth. Too bad that uh, he's gone now. He, he was actually Randy Poffo. You probably most all know that. And his brother is Leap and Lanny or Lanny Poffo. Uh, I don't know if he ever did he go by Leap and Lanny in WWF. I'm not sure. I think he did actually back around this time. But one thing that I remember from when I was about seven or eight or between eight and ten years old, Randy Poffo and Lanny were the top two draws here in World Grand Prix Wrestling or Atlantic Grand Prix Wrestling here in the Maritimes. Uh, and they come in with their father, Angelo Poffo, who wore a mask and called himself the Carpetbagger. Uh, Randy Macho Man, he was the bad guy. Leap and Lanny was the amazing good guy for two or three years, and they really honed their craft right here in the Maritimes, right here in New Brunswick, Nova Scotia, PEI. It was uh, a lot of great history for that uh, right here in Atlantic Canada. Billy Jack Haynes didn't stick around very long. I just saw a picture of him recently at one of the events, uh, Cauliflower Alley Club or something like that. And I was really surprised. Does not look anything like he does there. But uh, I just don't know what happened to him. He didn't wrestle a whole lot longer after that. 
and Hercules with Bobby the Brain. Of course, the Brain is absolutely amazing. He uh, he's gone now as well, but Hercules. He passed away a few years ago. Sad story, but he really was a, a mainstream wrestler. Sort of upper mid carried, I'll call him. King Harley Race. Back when I was watching this and he came in, I didn't know the history that Harley Race had. Uh, absolutely iconic wrestler in the Midwest. Um, Kansas, I think it was. And I didn't appreciate that at the time as much as I do now and I've learned more about the history of wrestling. He recently passed away as well. He was a... Incredibly, incredibly tough and respected man, but extremely good with the fans and really appreciated everything that uh, that the wrestling life brought for him. Kim Chi and Kamality again in Headhunter. He was a great cartoonish villain. James Harris is his name. I know he's still uh, alive down. I think he lives in Louisiana or Alabama or someplace like that. Uh, you can find him online. He's gone through some hard times, um, but uh, a lot of wrestlers do. I mean, they've got to make a living after the fact, and I don't know. It's really hard. I really enjoyed the work that he did, and I enjoyed that storyline back in those days. Here we go. Dino Bravo, Johnny V, Greg the Hammer Valentine. Yeah, that was, uh, were they called the Dream Team? No, that was Brutus, but this was the one they formed afterwards. And these guys, who did they wrestle? I, think, I don't remember who they wrestled in uh, in uh, WrestleMania 3 off the top of my head. But I do know that Dino Bravo, Greg Valentine, of course, still kicking around. He still wrestles some for Pete's sakes. But uh, Dino Bravo was actually shot down gangster style in Montreal back, oh, many, many years ago now. It was all over the tobacco trade, uh, illegal tobacco smuggling. And somehow he went wrong of somebody in some organized crime. And that was it for him. Interesting, though. Honky Tonk Man, he's still around. Wayne Ferris, yep, he's still around. He kicks around at different uh, organizations, uh, does appearances. I shouldn't say organizations, more like uh, conventions is what he does. And uh, overall, he was a, still the long was he still the longest serving uh, Intercontinental Champion? I don't know. He just had a way of, of really getting under people's skin. And he was a great, great showman. Outback Jack, don't know much about Outback Jack, really. He was around for a cup of coffee in the mid-80s, uh, based upon some Australian. Um, yeah, it's interesting, but here's one of my all-time favorites to watch, King Kong Monday. He just recently passed away as well. Chris Paley's, I think, was his name. Lived in Jersey, and uh, man, he put on some great shows. I will never forget in WrestleMania 3 when he tagged with... Uh, who was it? He tagged with uh, Little Tokyo and Lord Littlebrook versus Hillbilly Jim. I'm trying to think here. Uh, Little Beaver and the Haiti Kid. And he ended up putting the squash on <laughs> Little Beaver. And it was quite the thing to see, actually. It was like the all-time villain right there. But, man, he put on a great show. The Magnificent Morocco. He came and went. He was pretty big around this time. Um, just a behemoth of a man. But uh, he was the Intercontinental Champion. I, I enjoyed watching him wrestle, but he didn't really seem to stick around that long. By the not by ninety, he was done. Mr. Fuji and Killer Khan. Well, I guess the card's supposed to be for Killer Khan, but frankly, Mr. Fuji is the famous one in that bunch. He is in the WWF Hall of Fame, WWE Hall of Fame. I still sort of interchange the two. Mr. Fuji doesn't get it better than that. And as far as Killer Congo, I barely remember seeing him wrestle. The Natural Butch Reed is about the same thing. He was around for a year or so ago because he wrestled about this time. And then I do remember being in the big tournament in WrestleMania 4. Davey Boy Smith, I still remember. I still remember the day that I heard that he passed away. He's 39 years old. I was up at my in-laws place and I read it in the paper. And I was really surprised. It was almost before internet days. The internet was around, but I mean, I'm talking around... That was a late two thousand or early two thousands, I think. And of course, here's the Dynamite Kid with him. What a sad story! I have read his book. There's a book about the Dynamite Kid that sort of explains a lot of his life and the hard times that he had. And uh, man, it's uh, it's actually pretty sad. Um, uh, now, recently, he's just passed away as well. So they're both gone. The British Bulldogs are both gone now. Um, I don't know. I don't know what more to say about that. It's a difficult business. Ricky the Dragon Steamboat from one extreme to the other. I mean, Ricky's still doing well. He popped up a couple years ago in the WWF, WWE, and he had a little bit of a minor comeback. Uh, wrestled some matches against some mid-characters and did really well. The two-man clothesline. There's the Hart Foundation laying somebody out with their finishing maneuver. And rough turn wrestler. I don't remember Danny Davis. Uh, he part uh, teamed with uh, T. 
teamed with the Hart Foundation in WrestleMania 3, turned on him, and I can't remember exactly how it is. He must have done something that enabled the Hart Foundation to win the tag team championships, and then he became an evil wrestler. And He actually went back to refereeing after this for a while, and it's kind of interesting, but it was sort of neat for somebody who wasn't even a wrestler to get the opportunity to be in the spotlight for quite a while. So it was really, it was interesting. It was a good storyline. Here we go. He's Jake the Snake Roberts. So this is sort of curious to me. Like, you get a card for Frankie. We're past all the individual cards. You get a card for Frankie, but you don't have one for Jake the Snake. You throw him on one called Ready to Strike. I don't know. doesn't make any sense to me. He fought, uh, who did he fight? I can't remember who he fought. It might have been the Honky Tonk Man in WrestleMania 3, but he had Alice Cooper with him. Um, I know Jimmy Hart had the snake put in his face. I do remember that. There's Outback Jack in the Outback. I'm going to try to pick it up a little bit here. Move a little quicker here. The Hulkster explodes. There's a typical Hulk Hogan scene. Double whammy. There's another situation. There's two wrestlers there who wrestled a lot, really prominent in the 80s. Uh, the Rougeau brothers. They did a lot of different uh, gimmicks. I mean, they were the Quebec champions, the French champions. They were good guys. Then they, uh, Raymond actually still does play-by-play -play and does the French play-by-play -play in the pay-per-views nowadays. Uh, Jacques, Jacques was an interesting sort. There's some stories about Jacques. He used to upset people in the locker room quite a bit. And there's a story about him having all of his teeth knocked out or something like that. I don't know. You'd have to find some, read Bret Hart's book and you'll find it a lot more. Cause of course that was very prominent during the time when Bret and the Anvil were right in the middle of things. The Islanders, of course that right there, that's Haku, toughest man in wrestling. Uh, Meng or Haku, whatever you want to call him, they say he is the absolute toughest guy in the history of professional wrestling. And uh, he looks it. <laughs> Flip flop. Okay, that's a neat card. Cool. Islanders attack. More of Meng and, and uh, who's it? Haku and Meng? I can't remember what the name was. No, not Haku and Meng. It was Haku and I can't remember the other guy's name right off the top of my head, but that's all right. The other Islander. Ah, uh, there we go. King Harley Race. Perfect picture. Really, uh, too bad he's gone gone to backbreaker it's hercules with it looks like bob holly over his shoulders i don't know if it is or not double drop kick that looks like strike force which would be rick martel and tito santana that's what it looks like i'm not 100 percent sure on that and of course after the match if the king harley race beat somebody the brain made them kiss his feet or bow American made. That's an iconic picture of the Hulkster there. Sort of neat to see on uh, on a card. Challenge answered. Okay, this is after he maybe it's after he won the the match against Andre. Champ in the ring. We got all kinds of of Hulk here. All the different poses and such. Oh, go back in the screen here. Yep. Listening to Hulk Hogan. Of course, we've all seen that. If you watch the Hulk Hogan wrestle, he does that after every match that he wins. Gets the crowd. Oh, heading for the ring. Frankie and Coco beware. I was never a real big fan of Coco or Frankie for that matter. And sort of, I find it ironic that they each have their individual cards. Um, and then you have guys like, like I say, Jake the Snake or the Rujos or the Islanders who don't have cards in this set. Sort of weird. But then again, uh, Haku or Haku. Coco beware is also in the WWF Hall of Fame. And uh, what's up with that? I don't know. Out to Destroy Demolition, another classic combo that really, they should be in the Hall of Fame as well, but of course there's a lot of personal uh, issues with them. I think they're part of the the lawsuit against the WWE right now for brain damage and such uh, wear and tear on the bodies, so that usually keeps people out when you're suing the, the organization. That's it. It was Haku and Tama. Tama takes a beating. Another Islanders card. Bundy in midair. Yeah, just wait for it and listen for the bang after that one. Karate Stance, you got Ricky the Dragon Steamboat, her eyes on Randy, there's Elizabeth, of course she was really the most beautiful lady in wrestling back before there were beautiful ladies in wrestling, and um, her story is really sad as well, I can remember she died in 2003, and the reason I remember it so clearly is they actually had Raw and Smackdown in Halifax, Nova Scotia in May 2003, and I went down that weekend. Uh, three of us went down and saw both shows. It was a great weekend, great shows. They had her uh, monta little montage at the beginning of one of the shows where she had passed away over the weekend. And uh, the one thing I do remember most about that show was it was Steve Austin had been out and he had had problems with Deborah and had a, had a, 
oh, I can't remember what it's called. Uh, had problems with the law, he wasn't allowed to drink as part of the conditions of his release. And it had just finished. So this is in his book, and it's a great book. If you ever get a chance to read Steve Austin's book, it's, uh, it is funny. It is really well done. Um, that had been released. He was allowed to drink, so he had this Stone Cold Steve Austin beer bash. And they had more beer in that ring that night. Uh, O'Keefe, I could still remember the beer, in, down in uh, Halifax. And I was there. It was great. Ken Patera. Again, you're going to give a guy a card like this, just the Olympia returns. Why not just give him a Ken Patera card? I don't know. I don't understand it. Butch Reed, same type of deal. Well, he did have a card. Now he's got another one. Flying Body Press. Remember the Killer Bees? Jim Brun jumping, uh, jumping Jim Brunzel. And, oh my God, I can't believe it. Not Greg Gagne. Oh, it'll come to me. I'm sorry. That's stupid. I should know that. Uh, hook in the leg. It looks like Butch Reed in there. A belly Buster. Another Butch Reed clip. There is WrestleMania 3, Revenge on Randy from the Ricky the Dragon Steamboat and uh, Randy Savage. One of the greatest matches in history right there. Uh, if you have not watched that match and you like wrestling at all, you have to watch it. The full Nelson, that was a Full Nelson challenge between Hercules and Billy Jack Haynes. That was a pretty good match, actually. Honky Tonk goes down. Yes, there you go. It was Honky Tonk versus Jake the Snake that match. It was a quick match, but it was really good. And there's over the top. That is, uh, that's uh, Danny Davis flying over the top. Fought the British Bulldogs, and I can't remember who was with them off the top of my head. There is Andre the Giant being slammed by Hulk Hogan. Out of the ring. Oh, what's that one? Oh, that's uh, Ricky the Dragon Steamboat uh, throwing Randy out. Man, they really threw themselves around. It was an absolute fabulous match. And still champion. There's Hulk Hogan going away. The Hart Foundation with Jimmy Hart, Danny Davis. Yeah, great clip. I think they ended up winning that match, actually. There's the original challenge on Piper's Pit of Andre challenging Hogan for the for the championship and ripping the ripping the chain, the cross, off his chest. And it's just an iconic uh, clip that they should still show all the time nowadays. Bear Hug, Jim the Anvil, and Billy Jack Haynes. I have no idea what that's from because that's not WrestleMania, that's for sure. Flying body press. That's kind of neat. Aerial maneuvers. Of course, when they get flying around, that's that's great. Ray to sting. Jim, jumping Jim Brunzel. And I am... That's driving me nuts. I can't think of his name. And I know his name. It's not... It's, uh, B. Brian Blair. That's what it is. B. Brian Blair and jumping Jim Brunzel. All right. There you go. There is the uh, showing off. That's the hitman in the classic pose back in the day with the sunglasses and the... The same pose he used afterwards as a good guy, too, kind of, but uh, it was more arrogant at that point. Scare tactics, of course, the way the demolition always came out to the ring was uh, really good. Like the black leather studded goalie mask was great. Then they flipped them off at the same time and, and uh, had that menacing look on their face. Take you about Ricky the Dragon Steamboat. Of course, High Flyer, he would uh, always be out there uh, doing stuff like that. Just really could get the crowd going with his high flying act. George the Animal Steel. It's another. That's the first we've seen George the Animal in this, and he was great. He was involved with the, uh, with the uh, Ricky and Ricky the Dragon Steamboat and Randy Macho Man Savage match, uh, protecting Elizabeth. No, after Elizabeth, he was on. Uh, um, he was on uh, Ricky's side, and he, of course, the the storyline was he was after Elizabeth. That's right. Nice guys finish last. There's another Outback Jack one. I don't understand it. There's Erd Nice. Okay, yep. The animal. Kamala. No, him not dinner. Yeah, that's really good. Again, why waste cards like this when you have more cards of other people? We are the original destroyers. Nothing stands in our way. Honky Tonk Man and Jimmy Hart. I told you when they boo, they like you. More Honky Tonk Man. I'm going to take out, take a big bite out of them. Matilda, the British Bulldogs, of course. Yeah, and there's the Iron Sheik and Butch Reed. I don't even know if the Sheik was still there at that time. Anyway, it's pretty good. Is this the last card? I think this is the last card. And it's Killer Khan. And uh, like I said before, I don't even remember Killer Khan wrestling. Anyway, that's the entire set. Uh, 
there's a lot of waste in there, I think. There's a lot of cards that are really neat to have. But overall, you know, there seems to be quite a bit of waste. I don't know. I don't know if I would uh, recommend getting that set or not. Although, I'm going to do this. Pretty much guarantee that you're going to get a superstar that you remember. There we go. There's right up there. King Kong Bundy. I just love going back and looking at these old cards and reminiscing about the old, the days of wrestling back when I was so much younger. Uh, it was much more cartoonish than it is nowadays, but it was just so much fun. I mean, I got WrestleMania 3 on DVD. I haven't even opened it yet. I've watched it umpteen times because, you know, I always had the VHS tape too, so I know I've watched that one 20 times. I got the complete set. That's the whole box set of the first 14 WrestleManias. Anyway... I think I got a little bit of a gift uh, to share with you guys today. I actually have one package, one wax pack of unopened 1987 WWF Tops cards, and I'd like to give it away to one of my viewers. All you have to do is comment down below and put in there who your favorite wrestler is from the 80s or 90s and explain a little bit about why. It doesn't have to be too detailed, but just, uh, just why you love this so much and what your favorite wrestling memories are from back in that era, if you have any. Uh, maybe you're too young, but if you've ever gone back to watch older uh, wrestling, you'll really start to love it. Anyway, guys, just a little something extra. Thanks for spending a little bit of time with me today. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and we'll see you next time, guys. Take care. If you have been grown up by the age. You want to pop a peep? The old guy gamer.